And so Peter, as we see, is once again filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, being filled with the Holy Spirit is not a one-time thing, as we see. It's not a one-time thing. As soon as we slip and are influenced by our sin nature, we should repent and once again ask God to fill us with the Holy Spirit. The only chance we have of living the right way is, have, is to have the Holy Spirit controlling us, and that's what it means to be filled with the Holy Spirit. 9. Peter continues, If we are being examined today concerning a good deed done to a crippled man, by what means this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man is standing before you well. Well, Peter was not vague, was he? Or diplomatic in his teaching. Spirit-filled people are not vague about anything concerning God. They are full of God, and they speak the truth with love, but with boldness. And Peter's words will offend some, but that's between them and God. Verse 11. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. They had rejected Christ. The Jews had rejected their Messiah, but God raised him and put him in charge of the church. Jesus did not try to be accepted by the world or the religious establishment for that matter. His big concern was to be accepted by the Father, and he was. And one of the most pathetic sights is a Christian who says they believe the Bible, who says that they are an evangelical, but then tries to be cool in the eyes of the world. Cool or uncool isn't even the issue. Live for God, speak truth, be good, and let what happens happen. That's what Jesus did. 12. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Jesus is the only way to heaven. That's not my truth. That's not my truth. That's not narrow-minded even. That is truth. And it is everyone's truth. Whether they choose to accept it or not doesn't change the fact. 13. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated common men, they were astonished. And they recognized that they had been with Jesus. Peter and John didn't have formal religious training. They were fishermen. But they sure spent a lot of time with Jesus, which is more important than formal religious training. Now the world may not accept that for credentials, but it doesn't matter because God will use a person who spends time with Christ. 14. But seeing the man who was healed standing beside them, they had nothing to say in opposition. Evidence that there was power in the name of the resurrected Christ was standing right before them in the person of this healed man. They had truth. They just refused to accept truth. 15. But when they had commanded them to leave the council, they conferred with one another, saying, What shall we do with these men? 
for that a notable sign has been performed through them is evident to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. The Lord's enemies admit that in the name of Christ a great miracle has been done, and they don't know what to do as a result of that miracle. They don't know what to do. Isn't that something? Their sin-loving, truth-hating, stubborn hearts wouldn't let them do the simple, logical thing, which, be, which would be repent and confess that they had murdered God's son. That's the simple and logical thing. But they're not going to do it. 17. But in order that it may spread no further among the people, let us warn them to speak no more to anyone in this name. Well, they were not trying to protect the people from spiritual error. Which is what they should have been doing. That was their job. They didn't want the popularity of Christ to spread through the apostles, because if it does, then they will lose popularity. They're still jealous of Jesus. That's why they put him to death in the first place. Can't shut him down because he's God. And he's still growing in popularity even though he ascended into heaven. And they continue to try to squash the message of Christ. And they continue to fail. 18. So they called them and charged them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. Don't ever talk about Jesus again, they said. We forbid you to teach that he is the Son of God. And you cannot say, we killed God's son, and that the Father raised him from the dead. You just can't say that. It is bad to reject Christ, which is what they did. It is worse to prevent others from hearing the message of Christ, which is what they are trying to do. You want to damn yourself to hell? Go ahead. But you better not you better not hinder the gospel of Jesus Christ from going to others so that they can be saved from hell. 19. But Peter and John answered them, Whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you rather than to God, you must judge. It is a truth that shouldn't have to be taught that we should listen to God and obey Him rather than someone who tells us to do something contrary to God's will. I mean, that this should go without saying, right? It's a truth that shouldn't even have to be taught that we ought to listen to God instead of somebody who tells us to do something contrary to God. 20. For we cannot but speak of what we have seen and heard. They had to proclaim that Christ was raised from the dead and that he was the only Savior. Jesus commanded them to do that and the Holy Spirit compelled them to do that and they would be miserable therefore if they didn't. The stakes are too high and the consequence is too severe for us not to speak the truth and follow the way of truth no matter what that means for us personally. 21. And when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding no way to punish them because of the people, for all were praising God.